Don't Dad, 2023, fifth anniversary. Chris Sumby, festival director and band booker. So you are the man with the pen. Keyboard. And keyboard. keyboard yeah, <laughs> keyboard, email, mouse. Not much pen in these days, but it's, um, yep, book the bands and uh, make make the dream come, come alive for everything else to follow on. So, cool. Do you remember that first one and after it happened, you were stood on the stage and everybody was chanting your name on the stage after Skid Row left the stage. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, it was um, one of the highlights of my life so far. The first event, as you know, you were there, you saw how it sort of came about, the success it was having Skid Row that first year, unbelievable. Choir Boys, Wolfsbane, Anvil, Graham Bonnet, Massive Wagons, uh, Hand of Dimes, Chrome Molly, Fallen Mafia. Rest in peace, Hannah. That first year, I wish we could go back, take that lineup, and do it now as an established event, because I think sort of we're, it would do a lot better under the name of Stone Dead or Stone Deaf now after five years, and it would, I would love to do that. So we'll see what happens in the future with that one. I was going to say that's a good idea for the future, maybe. Tenth year anniversary. Eh? Ten years anniversary. That would be a good idea. Yeah. I thought you've only got five years to go. I, that'd be fine. We could cheat and pretend we did one in COVID, that's only fair. <laughs> so put, putting the lineup together, first of all, uh, is a double-edged sword. It's a nightmare, but it's also a privilege as well. How do you pick the bands? Um, I come up with a list of like bands I would love to see. I uh, talk to Louise and Neil, the other director, and say, this is what I'm thinking, what's your thoughts? Nine times out of ten, they'll agree and say, yep, go with it. Other times will be because of, have you, have you thought about this, have you thought about that? Um, sometimes it is quite difficult to get your ear list and you've got to sort of chop and change. I mean, I was just talking to Cormac from The Answer. We wanted The Answer four years ago. He, and then he says, yeah, I remember it all coming in. I said, obviously the band's been on a hiatus. So, so they've been literally penciled in for four years. Um, obviously, uh, Black Star Riders we had for 2020, then it rolled over to 2021 and then they couldn't fly over from America because of the Lurgy. So we've had them kind of like on the back burner as well. So there's, there's a lot to think about. Obviously being one day, one stage, it's harder than it looks because you've got to try and get the mix right. Uh, you've got to try and make sure that the, the lineup sort of, it's eclectic. So if you, the, the, the prime example is when you look back at Monsters of Rock in 1985, when they had ZZ Top, Marillion, Bon Jovi, Metallica, Rat and Magnum, um, you had like a, a good range of bands. And that's what I try to sort of do is like, if you get, if you got something who's bluesy get something heavy if you've got something sleazy get something sort of different you know get something more like new wave of british heavy metal and mix it up because then you will try and appeal to as many different people as possible but then they're going to see something they've never seen before a lot of people are like well nobody's seen drops before today you know and like sort of they, they've came off stage and they've won five thousand new friends and they've been blown away by it and there's a lot of people never seen florence black there's a lot of people never seen south of salem or collateral they come away today and it's possibly the new favourite bands. South of Salem's tour later on in the year is going to sell really well now because everyone's like, these were really good. I'm going to buy my ticket on Monday. So, yep. But then again, you're under pressure because you're trying to please everyone, which is impossible. And it's quite easy to take the, neg the negatives to heart. Um, but when you look back and you might get like 500 comments and you get three which aren't particularly great, you've got to think the other 497 are bang on. So it's hard and I lose sleep over it, but it's nice. I was going to say, because you, you're you very passionate, of course you are, you are. but you, you, do you take it to heart a bit too much sometimes? Yeah, and we tell each other off, uh, Neil's exactly the same, Louise is exactly the same, the rest of the guys in the team are, we, you know, because we do it as a, an interest and a hobby, we're all volunteers, we don't get paid for it, we do it on top of our day jobs, our day lives, I mean this last year we, we had a baby, Last the, she was due the day of Stone Dead last year, so we, we, you're juggling things and then you, you're trying to put this together. And this year, and I said yesterday, I said, you know what, we've gone like head over heels with this being the fifth year. We've tried to sort of make it explosive and do everything mega. And we've put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make it the best one. Um, and to be honest, I think if a lot of stuff we hadn't have done, people wouldn't have noticed and they wouldn't have cared. But we do, and we want to make sure that when people come and go, that was the year you did this, this was the year you did that. And, and then they'll remember it as we'll go on to the next few years. So let's take the gravestones, with it being the fifth anniversary, we've got the gravestones all over. And that's a topper as well, that was a story. I'll tell you very quickly, last week we discovered that um, Mason Hill had been misspelled on some of the artwork to Manson Hill, which is a, which is a, which is a tribute to um, Marlon Manson and Cypress Hill combined. 
but obviously we didn't have them on the lineup, so we yeah, that was the last Wednesday. So we quickly got the artwork changed, everything reprinted, and then four o'clock Wednesday afternoon they rang the cancel. So we had like sort of all this artwork done with Manson Hill, Manson, Manson Hill then Mason Hill, then we had to get it done with Florence Black. So it's things like that which add to the, the, when you're doing everything else. But looking back this time next year, we'll be we'll be cock out laughing about it. But at the time, it's not funny. No, it's not funny at all, is it? Uh, no. And quite a coup. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult this yeah. year. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people last year when we did the artwork and they were going, oh, it's going to be a Blue Oyster Cult with the Reaper, Reaper, don't fear the Reaper. And it was like, no, no, it's not Blue Oyster Cult because um, we're doing it with the Graves and the Reaper over the Graves and then Blue Oyster Cult became available so we booked them and it was like, you Billy liar, you said you didn't have Blue Oyster Cult. I was like, we well, didn't at the time we did the artwork, you know, so yeah, um, the guys are apparently looking forward to the show. It's, the, it's UK exclusive for us this year. It's our first UK exclusive as a festival. We can't wait for them to, to get into hospitality, have a chat with them, get them onto the stage and then get 5,000 people sort of all sing along with them. Festivals bring their own challenges. What challenge have we had this year particularly? <sighs> um, to be honest, Tosh, um, last year, compared to the COVID year, which you saw when we didn't have a stage and power was going off, last year was such a breeze. We tried to copy and paste a lot of it this year and I think we just expected it to be a carbon copy and we forgot like sort of some of the little pitfalls and we're just every now and again we're going oh we've got to make sure we get this and get that right get this right get that right and it's just it's still a learning curve so it's just making sure that we don't get sort of too complacent and we're still trying to get better and improve and just make sure that the main thing is to make sure that the fans are happy and the bands are happy because if they're both happy everything's bang on if either of those two aren't happy we've got problems and so far touch wood they've all been happy and of course, the main challenge is 2024. You've got an out top 2023. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell you in 2018, when I was driving home, I was driving home on the Sunday, it was lashing down the rain. And I got literally half an hour up the road, driving like, I think, we've just done our own, own rock festival. And then like the panics, like I was like, my God, we're going to have to do it again next year. Like how, how do we even sort of like try and match it, let alone improve it. And Neil and Louise and the rest of the guys were exactly the same. It's like, I don't know what we're going to do. And then we did 2019, we got a bigger crowd. The lineup was fantastic. 2019 was like driving home, like how we're going to do it. So when we got past 2021, when we got so far into 2021, I started making inquiries to get bands for the next year. So the pressure come September is in there. And this is pretty much, it's now like an 18 month project because we're pretty sure with what we're going to be doing at the next year. So we can start making inquiries and bookings and get things in place. And there's a lot of conversations this year saying, for next year, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this. We couldn't quite do it this year, but we'll do it next year. So it's now an 18 month project rather than 12. And Donington, which this is loosely based on, is the ethos, the, the feel of, of what Donington used to be. Uh, we spoke to Crusher earlier on, and he's talking about the picture of you and him. Yeah, uh, Monst <laughs> Monsters of Rock 1994 was the first show I was allowed to go by myself with my friend rather than with an adult. Um, and we just bumped into him and uh, Bullseye walking through. And we said, like, oh, Crusher, come have a photograph with you. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, yeah, of course you can, boys. Of course you can, rock hard, rock every animal. And then when we first started doing this, I sent him a message and said, this is me, would you do this? And he just went, fuck off. And I was like, <laughs> come on, Crusher. And then obviously you must have looked at the photograph and listened to what we had to say about trying to do a Monsters of Rock thing and thought, well, at least they're trying, you know, they might, they might not have to go on the funny bus back home, but you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. And true to his word, he came along the first year, he was our compare and yeah, he's one of the family now. Um, it's just, I think he's, go he's going to be like, I don't know, uh, Keith Richards and just outlive everybody. So he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be doing Stone Dead when we're long gone. <laughs> and apart from Iron Maiden, who would be your ultimate headliner? Because um, I know you're a massive Maiden fan. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it would, it's, you know, it's, it's nice to dream. But I think, um, and I said this the first year, I would love Airborne, I would absolutely love Airborne. I would look, I, I would have um, Blackberry Smoke, Blackstone Cherry. I would absolutely love Nightwish, and I would love a Monomoth. So there's, there's, we might have to aim a little bit higher and see what happens, but um, obviously Saxons have obviously been a band we've been chased since day one, so we've got to put them in there. Um, there's, there's loads, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying not to sort of give myself not enough options, you know. Um, but yeah, we'll see what the next couple of years brings, and. Uh, but the way people have been talking today and they're going back home, especially the agents and the managers, 
they're all going back home and going, you know what, I'm going to speak to some other guys and I can do this for you, I can do this for you, do this for you. Like, oh, that's really nice of you. We'll talk next week. Um, so we'll see. See how it is. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chris Sambi, making the impossible possible.